This week on Fireys, City Lockdown. The risk that the crane could fall into one of the buildings around here or across the uh, Carl Expressway. An extraction with a difference. We're very, very lucky today. <laughs> Leap's endurance test. So overheating and water loss is the biggest risk without a doubt. I'm struggling, mate. That's why we've got Ambo standing by. And? All these men, yell, yeah, they might be all right. I don't come home going, yes, I installed a smoke alarm today, because th that's, that's what I do, it's my job. I'll be talk of the street, I tell you. <laughs> It's early evening peak hour in the centre of Sydney. And a fire at the Barangaroo construction site has just triggered the potential for a disaster this city has never faced before. We've had a major fire at Barangaroo, which is burning underneath a concrete slab underneath a 100 metre crane that weighs about 40 tonnes. So the risk is that that uh, formwork will give way and the risk that the crane could fall into one of the buildings around here or across the uh, Carl Expressway. So hence, all the buildings have been evacuated and the Carl Expressway has been closed. Glebe's D platoon is not rostered on today, but scores of its Sydney colleagues have poured into Barangaroo to battle this blaze. Among them, fire investigator Steve Apps. Well, the first thing I saw was just a whole lot of fire trucks. Um, there was hose laid out everywhere, monitors, streams of water going on directly onto the crane. And lots of smoke accumulating over the area of origin. It was, like, it was the 10th alarm, so it was a given that there was going to be an investigation of something of that size. The biggest challenge for fireys is the location of the fire. It's in a basement area directly under a freshly poured concrete slab. Well, in this case, the firefighters were facing a, sort of an unknown structural situation where the, the concrete was fairly new. Uh, the effect of the extreme heat and the temperature on the fairly green concrete would dehydrate it and make the steel reinforcement within it expand, which compromises the, the strength and uh, obviously compromising the firefighter's safety to be underneath it, but it come, come crashing down on top of them. But the concrete slab isn't the only danger. The 100 metre, 40 tonne crane sitting nearby is also at risk from the heat. Uh, the heat, the heat uh, at the centre there at the crane was detected at 1100 degrees Celsius. Uh, steel starts to deform, you know, around 700. It became an unknown. We weren't sure if it were, if it were to be compromised, which direction it might fall. The start of Liverpool's day shift is a call out to a dental emergency at a medical centre. Relieving SO, Bill Specky Speck wants to get to the incident as quickly as the traffic will let him. Gracious me. When they get there, this quiet, ordinary shopping centre reveals a bizarre incident. You immediately think persons trapped, people in the building, people in the car. Fire in a basement at the Barangaroo construction site is threatening to topple a 40 tonne crane. Fireys have created a 150 metre exclusion zone around it. Buildings are evacuated, roads are closed, and all available eyes are on the crane. Well, the, the surveyors on, on site have got a, an instrument that can uh, measure any, any movement, really subtle differences in movement. And they've been, and I've been standing by them with. Uh, Radio, in case uh, it, there was any sudden or even you know, just a gradual shift, we had to be aware of that. With the crane under the close scrutiny of engineers, Fire Superintendent Wayne Phillips can keep his focus on the blaze. So the first thing was to knock the fire down uh, externally. We do a thing called defensive, at uh, defensive attack, where the crews are outside with big hose lines to knock it down. But the effect of that, the slab acting like an umbrella, effectively shielding the, the fire that was growing underneath it made, made it very difficult to get to. 
you cannot get the water di directly onto the seat of the fire. Well, looking at this stage, you might have to actually drown it to uh, fully extinguish it. You have to fill it up, I think, and basically let the water rise. And it's a very, very large area. So at this stage, that looks like as clumsy and as primitive as it that seems. I think that's the most, it's the only real option. Confident the concrete slab above the fire is stable enough, Wayne Phillips sends his fireys down into the heart of the blaze. So now we've, what we've done is an internal attack with uh, crews going down to knock the fire down internally, as far as it's safe for us to do so. The fireys head towards danger and extreme heat. In the reverse of a building fire where the heat's above us, yeah. uh, to go to a basement fire, the heat's sort of, we're going to go through the heat to get to the fire. Uh, they weren't sure what they were getting themselves into. We had done uh, timber form work all the way through the area. There's form work underneath here. There's burn on that. There's trip hazards everywhere, uh, extreme heat. It was just too black, hot and smoky. There was no way of visually in contact with where the fire was actually originating from. Um, and then you throw in the structural instability as the X Factor we will it stand up if we're underneath it. There's 100 fireys on this job. Anything major happens, will we know who we've got? And no one knows what is going to happen next. Anyone still in the building? No all? one. Everything, everyone's out. Liverpool's B platoon is at the scene of an accident where a car has crashed into a dental surgery. You're one receptionist, she's fine. She was behind the desk, but she wasn't injured. Yep. A lady's in here, no injuries either. Doesn't okay. want to go. Daughter's coming to pick her up. No worries. The police are on their way. It was quite a coincidence that her dentist had cancelled all his appointments that day. His wife was having a baby, and the only one in the other dental surgery was the girl. I was actually sitting behind the desk um, in the chair and the car hit the two front doors. Um, it hit kind of the side window as well, which flew, hit the desk, which made the chair fly um, and pinned me up against the back wall. But I'm OK and she's OK, so we're very, very lucky today. <laughs> very lucky. With no serious casualties, Fireys check out the damage. That's the biggest issue. Yeah, it's laminated, so it's not going to fall out. This is your issue here. Yeah. Structure. <clears throat> You reckon we'll be able to get that out without doing any further damage to the wall? Specky is concerned the whole structure could collapse when the car is removed. Venus, I'll keep you there. Yep. Just keep an eye and have a good look where the, that it's not going to pull that whole door jam out when it comes out. Yep. And I'll do the same over here. I'm tossing up whether to let the tow truck driver actually get in. He's quite willing to get in and try to drive it out to make sure it doesn't get stuck. I've got uh, Dan on that side and Pete on that side to have a look to see whether it's going to get wedged and whether it's going to actually pull the shop front back towards us, which we could have the danger of the shop falling on top of the bonnet. Hang on, mate. It's I think you're going to take, mate. It's hooking up on here. Yes, yeah. that, uh, Halligan, just pop it. It's just caught on the door frame. There we go. Stop, stop, stop. The extraction of the vehicle is a bit like pulling teeth. Not too much room for error. That girl was very lucky that she wasn't seriously injured. But she was she was shocked. But yeah, she was okay. Yeah, it's just a bit scary. <laughs> By nightfall at Barangaroo, fire is still burning two floors underneath a concrete slab. We've just had the process of um, what we call the platoon changeovers. All the crews that are working this afternoon who have overheated and exhausted, we've got some fresh crews that have arrived, so we just keep a check on where they are so we know where every firefighter is on the fire now at any time. In case anything major happens, well, we, know, we know who we've got. A constant supply of fireys keeping water on the fire pays off and by next morning it's extinguished. The giant crane survived the heat after all. As it turned out, it, it, it withstood the heat sufficient enough to stay there and, and be safely dismantled. As for the cause of the fire, that's a matter for the coroner.
Glebe's deep platoon is back on shift and the fireys are pushing up their pulse rates in preparation for a gruelling training day ahead. But the platoon is also managing other matters of the heart. Oh, One of our firefighters has got transferred to a uh, Wallara station. I spoke to the inspector and he told me that George uh, Wilkie was moving on. Um, it, uh, it came as a bit of a surprise. And it's sort of sad to see the team break up because we've been together for a long time. He's a link in the chain, he's solid. Um, and it's, it's obviously going to be a pretty sad moment when he goes. Yeah, some of my best mates. We're all pretty close. Been here for, I think, about five years. Yeah, time flies. Hi. Man. When these things happen, but it's just a pity to see George go because I'd have to say he's probably the best fire I've ever seen. Today is George's final turnout with his buddies at Glebe, and this exercise will test them all. Tunics off, guys, if you want. Tunics off? Yeah, just put the BAs over your t shirts and lay that across your cylinder. With two other teams, they'll climb the 100 story. 309 metre Sydney Tower in an extreme high-rise firefighting exercise. Hardly an easy last day for George. A lot of stuff to carry, and that's the physical challenge to get to the top. I remember when we got there last time, we were all pretty shattered. The fireys know they need to be mentally strong as well. My heart rate was 87, so it's gone up, what, 25? A little bit nervous, freaking out. The scenario is the lift motor room, which is on the top of the turret. So that's where the fire is. The lifts are out, so we need to get gear up there, search and rescue and fire attack. Sydney Tower, that's the highest building in New South Wales. So you can't really find a better building to, to train your high, your high rise firefighting in. We're up. Let's go. Dino is incident controller, and the first phase is a climb to level 11. Power rate 122 after the six levels. <laughs> the next phase is to enter the core of the tower. Overheating and water loss is the biggest risk without a doubt. Especially in the core, there's no airflow. There's no doors or windows in there, so it gets very, very hot. So that's why I've got Ambo standing by. I'm sweating up a storm. It's killing me. Anyway, should be right. OK, let's go. Bravo. Up another 89 levels. We're right behind you. But is it too tough for some? I was all talk before. I really am struggling. Resting on level 50, over. Glebe's D platoon has joined two other crews on an extreme high-rise firefighting exercise. Carrying all their gear, they have to climb 100 storeys to the top of Sydney Tower. Oh, this is ridiculous. I think it was a bad idea wearing this tunic. <laughs> Heat exhaustion is a big, big problem because of all the gear we wear for protection so we don't get burned. So it's good to have all that, but then it also retains all the heat. Yeah, no, it's going to hit. You'll have to lean it forward. Teams have just left level 30. on level 40. The relentless workout has pushed some fireys to their limit. But fireys never leave a team member behind. They help each other through. We wouldn't leave you behind if we're going on an incident, so it doesn't happen now. With no exits, the fireys are stuck halfway up the tower. Oh, struggling, yeah. Liverpool has its regular SO, Chris Andrews, back in the chair. And a return to work for him brings a reminder that some things never change. Oh, it's on the Prima. Two vehicle accidents. One vehicle rolled. Unknown trapped, unknown injured. Vehicle has flipped and gone into a 20 foot drop. It's so peak hour. And in the middle of an emergency. 
B Platoon has to deal with an obstructive side effect of the job. Unaware drivers. This scenario is so common, Chris has a name for it. Siren syndrome. I think people that are around cities that have all these sirens just become a bit blasé about it. People need to consider that it's their friends or loved ones we could be trying to help. When they do arrive, it's clear the car has taken a hefty hit from behind. The driver walked away with a few scratches. It's a good outcome, but in a job where seconds count... I understand everyone's got deadlines to meet and places to be. They think we're going to get in their way, but please just move over out of the way. It's just so important and, uh, yeah, it makes a huge difference to us if you try and help us instead of hindering us. Glebe and two other platoons are halfway up the 100 storeys of Sydney Tower. But the long line of fireys has come to a halt, with one of them down. Pressing on level 50, over. This is a massive, massive test, so firefighters do have to be reasonably fit. If we can get through this drill, then everything else should be a little bit easier. The legs turn into jelly about halfway up. But, I mean, these are the kind of scenarios, especially in the city, that could happen. You know, if the lifts are out, you've got no choice but to walk up the stairs. Yeah. I know you're fatigued, yeah, yeah. but if you start to feel unwell, then let us know. I'm not feeling unwell, it's my legs and my, my respiratory. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right, just go at your own pace. Do you want to take your BA off and yeah, we'll share that around? I'm going to take oh, it yeah. No, no, it's all right. Trust me. I'd rather that than you go back. You're working as a team. We've got to do your best to get everyone to the top. So that might mean, you know, taking some gear off someone if they're struggling or just giving that little bit of a kick along. Get that stuff in it'll help your muscle fatigue. Oh, thank you. All right. If you can't keep up with this crew, you can start to drop back. But, and yeah. as you drop back, when you get to the end, I'll stay with you, OK? So don't, don't worry about dropping back down to the, the back of Charlie, OK? Yeah, OK. It's now a case of onwards and upwards. All teams are now resting on level 60, over. I'm struggling, mate. I was all talk before. I really am struggling. For me, it's out of respect to uh, what the guys managed to do at 9-11 uh, incident. Um, getting up to some unbelievable number of flights. These guys are climbing up while they're trying to help everyone get down. Keep coming, guys. Keep coming. See, you're almost there. But the job's not over yet. The scenario is run the hoses from a plant room. So we're not going to spray any water around, we just want to get it all connected. All right, that's it, mate. End of scenario, real good. Oh. Fine, so good stuff, boys. We can head back down the fire stairs, eh? <laughs> no, let's get the lift. All right, let's go, boys. Back An elated platoon must now prepare for an emotional farewell. Part of a fiery's mission is to prevent fires ending in tragedy, and the best defence is a working smoke alarm. People aged over 65 uh, are far more at risk of a fire situation, and people don't necessarily have the help of their loved ones to help them, so a vast network of fire stations in the state will go around and help the elderly install the smoke alarms. Yes. Hello, my name's Chris. We're from Liverpool Fire Brigade. Pleased to meet you. We're here to help uh, your battery replacement oh, this morning. Oh, thank goodness, yes, cos one's not working and one's... Right. All oh, these men, you all, know, yeah, they might be all right. I'll be talk of the street, I tell you. They'll all be out, you know, <laughs> seeing, seeing what's going on. 
Yeah, because there's a window here, there's a window there. And... There's no point whatsoever in having a smoke alarm without a battery in it. Nothing, absolutely nothing worse than getting to a house where there's people, unfortunately, inside and you'll find a smoke alarm that is often without its battery or there's no smoke alarm at all. And the results are always, always tragic. And, and, and our job seconds count. All right, ready for a test? I'm going to test it now. How's that? Happy with that? Yeah, good. Very good. Now, peace of mind, I've got now. Yeah. I don't come home going, yes, I installed a smoke alarm today, because that's, that's what I do, it's my job. Where I get the buzz is where this working smoke alarm gets the family out. The time has come for George's last supper at Glebe. Joining the platoon at the table, honorary fiery skid, who's been part of the team here for nearly 50 years. Well, miss you, Georgie. Thanks for the last five years, it's been good. It is disappointing to see you go there, George. You really are the most relaxed guy I've met and in the in the job. And it's, uh, it's disappointing to see you go, honestly. But um, all the best at Wallara and um, keep your hair as long as you can. Yeah. <laughs> the platoon puts on a brave face, but Skid is not as stoic. Uh, I, um... Are you crying, Skid? Uh, um... Like this, I... Um... We spent a lot of time together. You did, mate, yeah. Yeah. More times together than the other firefighters. We had some good times, mate, didn't we? Yeah. Thanks. 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 These things happen. Yeah. Nothing's forever, is it? No. All good things come to an end. There are about 6,800 paid fireys in New South Wales, and last year alone, they responded to an average of 366 incidents each day. Most of them spend an average of 30 years in the service. I'm out of here. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Well, I'll see you all around, eh? Georgie! See you, boys. See you, buddy. And that's all for this series of fireys.